So you can see that with the dumb strategy of just buying the same amount every day, over a long period of time, you actually end up with less Bitcoin than any of the other strategies. What's up YouTube, it's Borette, back at it again with another video. Since January of this year, I've been running a couple different bots that have been passively dollar cost averaging Bitcoin for me over on the Gemini exchange. So today I thought I would share some of the insights that I've learned over these last few months with you guys and show you how I plan to actually double the amount of Bitcoin that I'm dollar cost averaging using the fear and greed index strategy. So if you guys watch the end of the video, I'll be sharing a free spreadsheet where you can do your own backtesting of the fear and greed index with whatever data that you want to use. We'll also mess around with the data ourselves during this video and see how it performs in different market scenarios. And then at the end of the video, I'll be showing you guys what I've been doing for the last few months and how that has performed versus just regular dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. Go down below and smash the like button for doubling your Bitcoin with free alpha and let's level up your brains. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've got this fear and greed analysis spreadsheet here for you guys. The link again will be down in the description. And in this first part of the video, I just wanna walk you guys through what is this spreadsheet and how can you read and use it. So these first two columns here, A and B, you're gonna see fear and greed raw and helper up at the top. These two columns are basically just raw data from the fear and greed index. And we'll talk about how to get that data in here in a second. And then this helper row here just allows us to reverse sort the list. So if you scroll all the way down, you can see that we have fear and greed data coming from February 1st, 2018. And if we scroll back up to the top, we can see that I've reverse sorted this list here in column C, fear and greed column flip, where now 2018 is at the top. And if we scroll again down to the bottom, we can see that 2022, April 8th is at the bottom. Then columns D, E, and F, we're basically just taking these different comma separated values in column C and turning them into their own columns. So there's the date, the number of the fear and greed indicator on that date and the classification on that date of either fear, extreme fear, you know, neutral greed or extreme greed. And then over here in column G, we have the historical Bitcoin price on this date coming from Google Finance. So as you can see, this spreadsheet only goes up to April 8th and I'm actually filming this on April 9th. And so let's go through a quick scenario of how would we input more days into the spreadsheet because you guys are gonna be watching this in the future. So how can you get data up until the day that you're actually watching this video? So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description. This is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index website where you can see what the current fear and greed index is showing. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that with different URLs, you can get different historical data. And so I will also leave this link down in the description. This is basically going to show you the last, you can see limit equals 2000 here. So it's going to show you the last 2000 days of fear and greed historical data. And so all you're going to do is you're going to copy starting from 0409 2022. Yours will be different if you're doing this, you know, someday in the future. You're going to start from the most recent date and you're going to scroll all the way down to the very first date that this data was recorded, which is February 1st, 2018. You're just going to right click copy. You'll notice that before we paste this data here, the number of values that we're recording up in this cell is 1525. And so when I go to paste all of the new data in cell A9, it's been one day since I've done this. And so we should see this number of values tick up to 1526. So let's go ahead and paste in A9. We'll see that 1526 was updated here. And and if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we'll see that there are some data elements here that just need to be dragged down. So let's highlight these cells all the way across and just drag them down one so that we can fill out the data for every single day that this data has existed, basically. If you do this on like May 9th in the future, 30 days from now, you're gonna have 30 blank rows at the bottom. So you're gonna need to drag, you know, highlight all of this and drag it down 30 rows. And, you know, to pretend here, let's say all of this just didn't exist. We just hit delete. If we now take those exact same columns. So let's take all of this again and just drag it down. It's going to auto populate again because we have all of the base data that's coming from over here. The last thing we're going to need to do, you'll see that this number down here, all of these are incorrect because I didn't put in a formula. Those were just static values. So what you're going to want to do is come up to historical Bitcoin price up here, copy it, drag it all the way down, highlight all these cells. Once you've highlighted all the cells, you can hit paste. It's going to do all of these calculations, filling in the last, you know, 1,534 days with the Bitcoin price. Now that you have that in here, you can set it to look like a currency. You can see that on certain days we're getting NA, and that's just because we tried to basically call 
install the Google Finance system like 1500 times right there. And so if we just refresh this spreadsheet for a second and we continue to scroll down, we should see that all of those NAs have gone away. So you can see here that I just refreshed the spreadsheet, the NAs went away, but now we're still showing the formulas here. And what we really want to do so that those calculations don't get run again is just highlight this whole column, copy it, and then paste it as values only here. So we'll go ahead and paste it as values. And now we're not going to run into any situations where Google Sheets is trying to update this information on us. Now we're free to basically do our analysis on what the different fear and greed parameters are and what is best for our use case. All right, guys, so I tried to make this as big as possible on the screen right now, but I think the easiest way for you to see this is just going to be going into the description and playing with this spreadsheet yourself. Basically, what you can do is I've created five or six strategies up at the top here. There's the base buy, which is how much you're buying if you're not below the fear floor or the greed ceiling that you've specified here. And then how much are you buying if the market is very fearful below your floor? And how much are you buying if the market is above your greed ceiling? And if none of this makes sense to you, please go watch the first video on the fear and greed index. I think if you are trying to optimize your dollar cost averaging and actually double the amount of Bitcoin that you're making for the exact same amount of money that you understand how these models are working and what it means to set a fear floor or a greed ceiling and what a fear buy is and what a greed buy is. So definitely check out that original video if you do have any questions like that. Finally, the last variable that you can change here is the start date of the analysis and the end date of the analysis. And then for each strategy, you're seeing what it costs you every day based on if you were within your threshold and how much you decided to buy up here. Like if I change this base buy to 100, you can see that the cost per day changes on every day to 100. And then the Bitcoin per day is calculated by taking the cost that you paid divided by whatever the price was on that day. And this will give you an ending amount of Bitcoin for the period that you've defined, an ending amount of US dollars, a total spend, a cost basis, an ROI, how much you spent on average per month, and how much cash was actually taken out and realized as profit if you did end up selling as part of your greed buy above your greed ceiling. And so you can basically tune these different strategies and compare in real time as you change things about you know which one is most profitable over which period of time. Okay, guys, so now that we understand these variables, we can start to change them and we can come to the second sheet down here called graphs and we can see how it affects the amount of Bitcoin we end with, the ROI of the strategy, the total spend of the strategy, and a graph of if any profits were taken during this period of time. So hopefully you can see here, it is a little hard to see on the screen probably that I set the start date to 124 2022, which is when I started using this strategy. And since then, we've sort of been in a trading sideways kind of market. So that's the first situation that we're going to look at. And then next, we'll take a look at a bear market and a bull market to see how these different strategies work in those markets. And at the same time, feel free to copy this spreadsheet, obviously, and change these strategies to whatever you want to reflect. So if we come over to the graphs here, we can right away see that the strategy where you end up with the most Bitcoin is strategy three. You're ending up with slightly more Bitcoin than strategies one and two. And then the total spend of strategy three is also slightly higher than all the other strategies. But the ROI is also not bad compared to strategies one and two. And then none of these strategies took profit during this time because we were trading sideways. We never really got into a greedy part of the market. Something that sticks out in the ROI side is this strategy five. But then if you go over to the amount of Bitcoin and the total spend of strategy five, the ROI is so high because you didn't really ever buy Bitcoin during this period. There were only a couple days when the market was really low that you bought. And so if you are looking for a really high ROI, this strategy from an ROI perspective outperformed strategies one and two by like seven X, but you're going to end up with less Bitcoin if the market trades sideways for a long period of time. And so you can look at these graphs and draw your own conclusions and you can sort of tinker with these numbers back here and it should update the graphs in real time. So for example, if we change the greed threshold or the fear threshold over on strategy five, let's go to strategy five and change the fear floor from 20 to 30. Now purchases are going to be made much more often. And you can see if we come back to these graphs, you can see that it's a massive difference, right? So it's very non-linear between 20 and 30 on the fear floor. So before where we weren't buying really any Bitcoin with strategy five, you can now see you bought like 10 times as much as you did from these other strategies. You now spent like $11,000 versus only around $1,000 on these other strategies. And you ended up with way more Bitcoin, but the ROI obviously came down, right? The ROI is now only 8.58% versus the 17 that it was before. And so let's go and change that back. But just illustrating a point that you can change these numbers and see the reflections in the graphs in real time. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and take a look at a bull market scenario. So we'll go from April 8th of 2020, sort of a low 
local bottom during the pandemic. Uh, the market is just starting to recover, but let's see what happens if you had started doing this during a massive bull market. And you can see up here, I've sort of created high level descriptions of these different strategies just based on what they look like out of the box. This is sort of a, you know, no fear and greed strategy. This is a accumulation strategy you're never selling. This third strategy you're accumulating and selling high if we ever get past the greed ceiling. Uh, strategy four, you're not really accumulating as much, but you're aggressively, you know, buying and selling based on the fear and greed indicator. Strategy five, you're not accumulating at all. And then strategy six is just some custom tinkering that I have been doing. All right, guys. So if we jump over to these graphs here, now that we have changed the date to sort of that bull market, April 8th, 2020 scenario, we'll see that the strategies that were selling off Bitcoin sort of aggressively and not really accumulating every day, they didn't perform well from an ending Bitcoin perspective. And actually you would have been better off if you just did the dumb strategy of buying the same amount every single day. And that's because in these strategies, four and five, you're actually a net seller of Bitcoin. So you ended up with a little bit of Bitcoin at the end of this period, but you actually also ended up with about $5,000 of just spare free cash flows that had spun off from the strategy. Whereas in these other strategies where you weren't really selling as much, you ended up putting a lot of money into the Bitcoin and obviously never took any out. And so that's why over here, these ROI numbers are negative. Doesn't really make sense. You can sort of think of it as infinite ROI because you did end up with Bitcoin and you ended up with US dollars at the end. You had taken all of this money out and you didn't really spend anything to get this, you know, point. 6 or 0.5 Bitcoin over here in the ending Bitcoin columns. And then over here in profits taken, the amount of profits that you took out in these different strategies, specifically four and five, was around $20,000. And then obviously the net total spend was around $5,000. And so you can see that in this strategy, it really depends what you want. Do you want to be making money and a little bit of Bitcoin? Or do you want to just be accumulating Bitcoin? If you want to just be accumulating Bitcoin for the long term, you're better off doing the normal dollar cost averaging strategy. But if you are interested, obviously, in collecting some Bitcoin and making money along the way, maybe those four and five strategies would be better off for you. And then if you want something in the middle, strategy two and strategy six also performed pretty well over this time horizon. Next, let's take a look at a bear market and see how that is maybe a little bit different than the two scenarios that we've seen so far. So I'm changing the dates now all the way back to the very first date that this data was available, which is February 1st of 2018. And so this is what would happen if you accumulated over basically a four year time Time frame and held through an entire halving cycle and went from a total bear market and more than 10 X up into the relative bull market that we're dealing with today. So this is what these graphs look like now. And right away, you can look at total spend and you can see that I've calibrated these values from the very beginning, looking at the total time horizon of from the beginning of this data existed to today. So actually these first five strategies all spent the exact same amount of money. And you can see that the ending Bitcoin and the ROIs and the profit profit taken for these first five strategies is radically different. So you can see that with the dumb strategy of just buying the same amount every day, over a long period of time, you actually end up with less Bitcoin than any of the other strategies. And that's because you're not taking advantage of when the market is at relative highs and lows using the fear and greed index. And important caveat mTOR here, you know, past performance and back testing like this is not financial advice. And it doesn't guarantee that any of this is going to happen again. This is just between the period of 2018 and 2022 if you did this, you did make about two times more Bitcoin using any of the fear and greed strategies than you did using the dumb strategy, quote unquote, of just buying the same amount dollar cost averaging every day. So if you just dollar cost averaged every day, you'd end up with about three Bitcoin. But if you took a little more of an advanced strategy of I'm going to maybe like strategy four, dollar cost average a little bit every day, but dollar cost average massively on the fear and greed index where I'm selling into the greed and buying a lot when it's very fearful, I would actually end up with twice as much Bitcoin doubling my total Bitcoin than I did in the dumb strategy of buying every day. And you can see that you actually spent the exact same amount of money. And that again, your ROI was 800% versus 300%. So more than double. And then you can see over in profits taken, profits were taken out in these three different strategies. And that's what's bringing down your total spend to be equivalent to these other strategies that didn't ever take profits. And then finally, let's talk about what I'm doing. I've actually calibrated strategy six here called custom tinkering to the amount of money that I'm willing to spend on average per month, which is around $900 on just dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. And you can do the exact same thing for whatever you want to do.
do, right? So whatever your average monthly spend that you want to be is, you can sort of just tinker with the base buy, the fear buy, the greed buy, and then these thresholds as much as you want, and then set a time frame that you're willing to execute the strategy for. In this case, I'm sort of committing to doing this for four years so that that average hopefully spreads out and hits this average again. So definitely play around with the spreadsheet and come up with a strategy that you're comfortable with. I like this strategy that I've built here because it guarantees that I'm getting at least some exposure every day. It still has a base buy. So even in those bear market cases that we looked at earlier in the video, I didn't end up like strategies four and five here where I didn't end up with any Bitcoin at the end of the strategy, right? I don't want to be a net seller of Bitcoin over the lifetime of the strategy. And if I ever did become a net seller of Bitcoin, I would probably update the strategy so that I could get back into accumulation. Since January of 2022 and executing the strategy, I've only had a couple of greed buys and those obviously disproportionately outperformed my just daily $10 buys. And I haven't actually hit a greed sell yet of selling $100 because we've been in sort of a sideways market that hasn't hit really fear or greed that much during these last couple of months. So next, let's talk about what should you be doing? You should understand that the fear and greed model is not perfect and that no model is perfect. The fear and greed model is just there to try to approximate local highs and lows of Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin starts to act drastically differently than the behavior that we've seen in the past, you can go to Michael Saylor and see his quote, but it's that all models will be destroyed. All your models are destroyed, completely devastated, Bitcoin goes to the moon. Right, so you don't want to be in a hyper Bitcoinization scenario and like selling out all your Bitcoin position because the fear and greed index told you to. So you have to understand that risk that if you are selling Bitcoin like this, using strategies that start to create outflows based on the greed ceiling, that there's a chance that you could never reestablish your original position because you've sold out all of this Bitcoin. And if the price just runs up against you, you're never going to be able to get back in. And then you should also consider the risks with strategies like option five, where there is no base buy. And so if we just trade sideways for a really long time, or if the fear and greed indicators get broken, and like you never hit this fear floor trigger, that you might just never accumulate any Bitcoin. And then the final risk that I would consider with these strategies is that while the average spend of some of these is, you know, very, very similar, right? The total spend is exactly the same. So the average spend would also be very similar is this idea that there's non-linearity in these fear buys and these greed buys. So the great part about buying some small amount every day is that it's very predictive that in March of 2022, I'm going to spend, if it's $20 a day, I'm going to spend $620. And then in April of 2022, I'm also going to be spending $600 and May $600 and June $600. But with some of these strategies where it's very non-linear and it's fear buys and it's greed sells, you could end up spending almost nothing this month and you could spend $7,000 next month. And if you end up in a situation like that, where you're not able to cover large amounts of aggressive purchases when the price is falling down against you. If you run into liquidity issues in a situation like that, it's not worth running the strategy in the first place because these numbers are sort of happy path numbers that assume that you can fund this strategy no matter what. So take that into consideration when you're figuring out like which strategy do I wanna implement and how aggressive do I wanna be with the fear and greed indicator? Because if you do run into liquidity issues, it's gonna mess up some of the math that you've done on paper here. All in all, I really like this strategy because it is totally passive. And as you can see over the long term, every single strategy, regardless of how we've tinkered with it, if we've implemented the fear and greed index whatsoever, it's massively outperformed just buying the same amount of Bitcoin every single day. Like we talked about though, not a guarantee of future performance. And so what I'm going to be doing is every year or every two years over longer periods of time, I'm going to be giving you updates on how this strategy has performed so that you can get more data points and sort of make a decision for yourself about whether you're ready to accept some of that risk that comes with running a strategy like this versus just doing a dumb or boring dollar cost averaging strategy every single day where you're buying the same amount. If you guys found this video helpful, go down below and smash the like button so that YouTube shares it around to other people. Comment down below if you guys have any interesting dollar cost averaging strategies. I'm really interested to run a couple of these in parallel, see which ones do the best, and then report back to the community on what I've found works and doesn't work. And then come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.